Coming up on today's Philadelphia 76ers now, happy Monday to everybody. Hope your weeks are off to a great start and all of you enjoyed a great weekend. Should the Sixers sign Olympic standout from France, Gershon Iabaselli, he wants to make a return to the NBA and frankly, he could fit pretty well on this Sixers roster. Also, is Tyrese Maxey next up as the next Sixer to play for Team USA in the 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles? First, show some love. Really cool to see Joel Embiid as an Olympic gold medalist. Type those two ones down in the comment section. In Team USA's biggest game of the tournament against Serbia in the semifinal, Joel Embiid, a big reason why they won. Really awesome to see him be victorious, win on a big stage, and play a big role. That also gets you pumped up. Hit that thumbs up icon, like the video. All right, let's start off with this. And Chip wanted to talk about this here on the show. The real one, Peter Thurman, messaged me on Instagram on Sunday. He brought it to the forefront, so let's do it. Yabaselli, the former Boston Celtic, had a breakout Olympics for Team France. He wants to return to the NBA. The Sixers have a need for some size at the four spot. And Daryl Morey was in Paris for the Olympics. Hopefully, he saw Gershon Yabaselli. Six games played for France, and he put up some really good numbers against some very good competition. 14 points per game, three-plus rebounds. He shot nearly 52% from the floor. He did display a three-point shot, although the efficiency number is not great at sub-29%, but decent shooting form, 81.5% from the free-throw line. And against Team USA, a team that is littered with future Naismith Basketball Hall of Famers, all NBA players, excellent players. He scored 20 points, had two rebounds. He was 6 of 14 from the field. He forced the issue and got to the free throw line. And keep in mind, during international play and Olympic play, oftentimes the whistles are swallowed and the officials will let some physicality go. He was 7 of 10 from the free throw line. So the fact that he made that many trips to the line Pretty impressive. He also had a crazy dunk over LeBron James. Now, more on the player here. Does have some pedigree. He was the 16th overall pick back in the 2016 NBA draft. He spent two years with the Boston Celtics. He has not played in the NBA since 2019, but he is now seeking another chance. He even took to social media in saying, I want that second chance in making a return to the NBA. And here's that tweet that he sent out on Sunday. Been waiting for a second chance. I'm ready. The motivated emoji and a teddy bear emoji. I think some people call him the teddy bear because of his body type. But what he would bring to the floor is a big physical forward. What do the Sixers have a need for? We're talking about Marcus Morris coming back. What about Yabaselli? The upside for the player might be bigger. So he's a big physical forward, a talented inside scorer. He's a good defender with versatility. His career in Europe, while in the Olympic session, he shot under 29% from three. Overseas, he did shoot 40.7% from three-point range on three-plus attempts. And one of the things that I like, he's worked on his game. Clearly, he's worked on his game. Since getting ousted from the NBA, he's now, now gone overseas. He's had a decent international career and was really good for Team France. And France is becoming a global basketball power, consistently finishing behind the United States of America. Now, at the NBA level, it didn't work out for him, obviously, as a former first-round pick. And here, as you can see in the photo behind him, right in front of Laurie Markin, and he makes Laurie Markin and look small. He is super thick there. Pause. But he's slimmed down his body at least a little bit, and he's in much better shape. Only played in 74 games in the NBA, two-plus points, one-and-a-half rebounds, 44-plus percent from the deck, and then 32% from three-point range. There is one issue here, though. Yabaselli is under contract with Real Madrid. That is the team that Luka Doncic used to play for before coming to the NBA. And that contract is for one more year. He would have to be bought out to make an NBA return. It would be cool to see Real Madrid just let him go. 
so that he can once again chase his dreams of being in the National Basketball Association. But the total contract buyout, $2.5 million. An NBA team can only pay $850,000 of that amount. So Yabaselli would be responsible himself for the remaining $1.65 million. Not ideal. That's a lot of money, and he would have a decision to make. The minimum NBA contract would be $2.1 million, plus no guarantee that he makes a roster. Is that a risk that he thinks is worth taking? Because he wouldn't make a lot of money coming back to the NBA, but do you take that risk and take that leap of faith and hoping, having confidence in yourself, that maybe you don't make money year one, but you parlay that into a decent contract and then you make up for it on the back end. Chip, me and you could not take our eyes off that France-USA final yesterday. So exciting. Steph Curry, just an iconic performance, or two days ago, excuse me. Is Yabaselli worth a roster spot after seeing what he did on Saturday? Look, I would be absolutely all for Philly going out and signing Gershon Yabaselli. I know it's been what is it, 2024 now, so five years since he's been in the NBA. But you mentioned it earlier, if you look at him in his body type now compared to what he was before, the man is jacked. He's super strong. He's the perfect sort of fit with his skill set for what the Sixers need. He would fit right in at that forward spot, be a very, very good defender. I mean, he was playing good defense against some of the best players in the world. LeBron James yeah. and Kevin Durant. Staying in front of him. Just yeah. tremendous, and he's strong. He can finish inside. We'll see, you know, if his outside shot would translate to the NBA, where the three-point line is a little bit longer. But I think it's still worth a chance. You're basically talking, you know, would you rather have him or Marcus Morris? Yeah, Marcus Morris might be a little bit more dependable. You know what you're getting. But if we're going for 14th guy on your roster, and you see what Yabaselli was just able to do at the Olympics, I would take a chance, man, because he could be... I don't think I'm over-exaggerating. A real impact player in an 8, 9, 10-man rotation for the Sixers. Bring a skill set they don't really have as a big-bodied, defensive-minded, tough, you know, forward. And he obviously wants to be back in the NBA very, very badly. He said it himself. There's no doubt to me that he would be putting his all in 110% every day. We saw that when he's playing for his country. I think he'd do that if he had another chance in the NBA. So Daryl Morey... If he's available, he's trying to make a, a run back to the NBA, and you can sign him for that minimum. I think you should be all over that. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Daryl Morey tweeted out a video of Joel Embiid celebrating after the semifinal win against Serbia. So I'm pretty sure he was there. And I imagine when Daryl Morey's over there, like he's trying to scout for this year's team, for the future, to see what type of international prospects could pop on the radar. So with that, we pivot to this. Should the 76ers sign Yamaselli? Type S for sign, P for pass. I kind of want it to happen just for the Philadelphia accents and Delco people. Yo, Yamaselli for three and two can play. He's girthy, man. Pause. Coming up next, after Joel Embiid won gold in Paris, should Maxi be up next in Los Angeles representing the Sixers for Team USA? First, these Team USA shirts are awesome. A lot of the players were wearing these out after winning gold during their celebrations. Chatsports.com slash Team USA. You see all the members there in caricature form with USA on the back. Um, or on the background, excuse me, Nike shirts. Get them today. Thanks to our friends at Fanatics, chatsports.com slash Team USA. Myself and Chip already put the order in. Is Tyrese Maxey a lock to make Team USA in 2028? When Chip and I were watching the game on Saturday, we were talking about the future of Team USA. And you're looking at LeBron James, who's 39, turning 40 in December, Steph Curry is 36 years old. Kevin Durant is an older player. You have Drew Holiday at 34 years old. And KD, by the way, 35 years old. And when the Olympics come back in Los Angeles, that's four years from now. So are LeBron, KD, Steph Curry, Drew Holiday going to be on the team? And we were having this conversation because we were saying, is Team USA in a precarious spot when you look ahead to the Olympics in 2028 in the homeland? Because you think about some of the superstar players who are Americans 
there aren't as many as we become accustomed to on the fence. Joel Embiid, 30 years old. Derek White, 30 years old. Anthony Davis, 31 years old. Kevin Durant was told that if he wants to come back and play for Team USA, there will be a spot for him because he's always been a terrific international player. And then you have the probable returners. Devin Booker's 27, Bam Adebayo's 27, Anthony Edwards only 23, Tyrese Halliburton didn't even play, he's 24, Jason Tatum is 26 years old, so in four years, that's probably the next wave of players who will be back. Now, assuming those five are locks, that leaves a max of seven spots open. So as you project forward, which players could be a part of the team, you have to look at the front court, the wing spot, and in the back court. Tyrese Maxey would be ideal. He'll be 27 then, and I think that he'd be a great addition. You see how difficult Steph Curry was to guard because of his limitless range. If there's a player in the NBA that can hit threes from anywhere right now who's young, Tyrese Maxey kind of fits that mold. Paolo Bencaro is a young star. Jalen Brunson is one of the top point guards in the NBA. Jalen Brown got snubbed, I think, this year. He should probably be on the team. In 2028, you have Zion Williamson in the front court. If he can play, uh, stay healthy, and he can keep the weight off. Cade Cunningham, 22 years old. De'Aaron Fox at 26. Chet Holmgren at 22. That helps you in the front court. But given the physicality of the international game, you're going to be need to bulk it up there. And then Jaron Jackson at 24. Cooper Flag, he's 17 years old. He's going to go to Duke, the consensus number one player in this year's class, who is expected to be the number one overall draft pick in the 2025 NBA draft. But certainly an interesting conversation to have because you might have a Team USA team in 2028 that simply does not have the Hall of Fame star power that we have been accustomed to seeing in years past here, Chip. And as part of this conversation, is Maxi a lock to make Team USA? Yeah, look, it's going to be an interesting 2028 Olympics because, as you mentioned, you have people like Giannis with Greece, obviously Luka, Jokic, Wemby, like all these other countries now, Slovenia, France, Serbia, they're going to be powerhouses. France could be a real powerhouse in 2028 with Victor Webb and Yama. Yep. If some of these young guys they have coming into the league, the number one and number two overall picks this past year, and Zachary Reese, Shane, and Alex Saar, if they hit and they pan out, man, France is going to be really good. Not to mention Bilal Koulibaly, some other guys they have there. But when you look at Team USA in, in 2028, there's a, there's a lot of good guards that, that you know, could be in contention. We said Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton at guard. They were on the team this year. I imagine if they want to play again, they're guaranteed a spot. So that's already three guards right there. Maxie, Jalen Brunson, Jalen Brown, Cade Cunningham, De'Aaron Fox. Those are five names at guard right there. Didn't even mention like a Donovan Mitchell is certainly a name that could be up there. If Derek White wants to play again, he'll be, what, 34? Yep. So he's certainly an option to return. Like, there's a lot of really good guards. John Morant is another name that we didn't mention that if he can figure everything out and stay healthy and get his head on straight, he could be a name that could easily be one of the top players for Team USA in 2028. Yeah. So it's a, it's a loaded, loaded roster. You know, Scotty Barnes is another name, name that we didn't mention. But I think Maxi, come 2028, should be good enough to, I think he could start. For, for Team USA, and as you said, be that Team Steph Curry. Yeah, one of the things about France, they didn't really have the guard play to keep up with Team USA, and the guard play has given France trouble in years past. You know that they oftentimes have that size, led by Rudy Gobert, but sometimes the guard play can be problematic. So Team USA will have that at the wing, forward, and center spots. That's where it gets interesting. Joel Embiid did throw out the possibility of playing for Cameroon in 2028. Just stick with Team USA if that's the case. Hopefully he's still humming by then, too. Will Tyrese Maxey make Team USA in 2028? Why for yes and for no? Join the conversation down in the comments section. And thanks for watching.